good morning students hope all of you are doing good now our world is going through a very tough situation all of you know that as a responsible citizen it's our responsibility to stay at home and stay safe so all of you should follow the instructions given by the government then only we can save from this current situation today i am going to teach the first chapter nutrition in plants now i know that many of you have no books and copies with you no problem no need to worry because through this lessons we are uploading some videos so that you can learn the lessons and also the class work and homework we are giving in the parent portal uh, under the heading question paper so you can download it and write down in your class work if you have no class work copy now no need to worry you can note down in a rough copy and afterwards you can write in the class work so first chapter is nutrition in plants already in class 7 you have studied that about the sources of food food is a basic and important need of all the living things all of you know that why do we need food we need food for getting energy also for growth and maintenance of our body it protect us from illness so different components of food that you have already learned that are carbohydrates proteins vitamins minerals etc all these are known as nutrients all these nutrients are needed by our body for the proper growth and development so now we have to study about what is nutrition nutrition is the process of taking in food and utilization of that food by our body is called nutrition so we all of you know that the main source of food is plants we get food from the plants so how these plants are preparing their food that we have to study so how these plants are utilizing it so the modes of nutrition we have to study the nutrition is mainly divided into two modes what is autotrophic and the other one is heterotrophic auto the word itself you know the meaning that self trophic means nourishment or we can say nutrition so self nourishment so those organisms which can prepare their own food is called a autotrophic nutrition so mainly green plants and bacteria some bacteria also so there they are autotrophic so they are also known as autotrophs plants are also known as photoautotrophs because they use sunlight for preparing their food hetero the word means others and trophic means nourishment again so organisms which depend upon others for their nourishment for their nutrition that is known as that type of organisms are called the heterotrophs so now we have to study in detail about the autotrophic nutrition autotrophic nutrition already i told green plants are the major one or the things which are prepared their own food so green plants are called autotrophs so they done this nutrition by a process is known as photosynthesis photo the word means light and synthesis means to combine so they combine some similar substances and produces food or carbohydrate or simply we are say that starch so in the presence of sunlight that process is known as photosynthesis already you have learned in lower classes is so photosynthesis is a process now i will write the chemical formula of the photosynthesis
carbon dioxide plus water is C six H twelve O six oxygen gas. Okay, so carbon dioxide reacts with water and produces the starch. So the materials now we have to study about the materials required for autotrophic nutrition or the photosynthesis. First one is water. Water and the minerals. We know that plants get water from the soil. So plants absorb this water through their roots. Root contain a smaller root hairs are there, and with the help of this root hairs, they absorb water. Then xylem. Xylem is a conducting tissue. Through this conducting tissue, the water will be absorbed by the plants and it is carried towards the leaves. Then second one is carbon dioxide. Carbon dioxide, all of you know that it is present in the atmosphere or air. Present in the atmosphere. So, the plants absorb this carbon dioxide through an organ known as stomata. Stomata are the small fine openings which is present on the lower side of the leaves. Stomata are controlled by two guard cells so it helps them to open and close the stomata. So, carbon dioxide enters through the stomata and it reaches the leaves. And the third one, the material required is chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is the green pigment which is present in the chloroplast of the plants. So with the help of this green pigment, they can capture this sunlight and carbon dioxide and prepare their crop. Then fourth important thing is sunlight. Sun is the main source of energy. So these are the four materials required by the plants to conduct photosynthesis. And chlorophyll is present in the green parts of the plants and especially leaves. And then also there are some plants which have in multicolor or a variegated leaves we are saying that. They can also conduct photosynthesis because some parts of chlorophyll is present in that. There some green parts are also there. Then algae. Algae you know that no? slimy patches without any roots. They are present in the mostly ponds, lakes etc. They are also conducting photosynthesis. The importance of photosynthesis is first one all of you know that this is the ultimate source of food for all the living organisms. So photosynthesis helps to provide food for all the living organisms. Then photosynthesis maintains the balance between oxygen and carbon dioxide in the environment. And it also provides oxygen for breathing. All of you understood the topics now?